A boy finds a notebook that you can write anybody's name down in and kill on a whim. Wants to change the world by killing bad people and scaring people from doing bad. Seems simple. So, when the police come for him, why doesn't he just sit in his room and keep doing it? It's not like they'd ever find him. Is he stupid? Well, what if I told you? That's not exactly what he actually wanted to do to begin with. In this video, let's go over the truth of Light Yagami's motives and what he actually wants as a character both consciously and unconsciously. For the past few years, I've been noticing this very common misconception of who Light is as a person. And they use it to attack Death Note as a fluffed up pseudo-intellectual series where the characters are actually somewhat dumb, but ramble and monologue in ways that seem intelligent. Some people go so far as to say the main character is so dumb, he loses in episode 2. However, as I said, these are usually due to a few misconceptions about both Light Yagami and L, the protagonist and antagonist, respectively, of Death Note and what they actually want to accomplish and do with their positions. I've hinted at a bit of this in my video, Is L Actually Evil?, which you can check out after or before this if you want, but this is more on the side of Light and how he more so functions in the story. In context, Light Yagami is a bit of a blessed child, very smart, considered handsome, has a loving and supporting family, and has the future sort of down pat. This is made further evident by other students being extremely jealous of him when he makes it into university, and how there's no justice because he has everything going on. Everything is pretty much guaranteed to go well. So, what made him snap and become Kira, one of the most famous killers in all of Shonen history? Disinterest and boredom. Light is very smart, and it's due to that that he knows how things are going to go. The things that therefore excite Light and interest him are things that are unknown, and things that are not so certain. Which is exactly why a notebook of death that can kill anybody interests him so much. Due to the way that Light is raised growing up, he has an inherent idea of justice being shoved in his head throughout his entire life. His father, Soichiro Yagami, is the ideal good person. To the point that even Death Note's author calls him pretty much the only good person in the story for the most part. Soichiro loves justice, honesty, and supporting those he loves. These thoughts are ingrained in light, and we find that many times throughout the story when his murder-intoxicated self is wiped off of him, such as when he loses his memory, he becomes the ideal Yagami child that embodies these traits. The only difference between the mind-wiped Light and the normal one, however, when they first learn of the Death Note, is their position in comparison to it. For the normal Light, the Death Note was introduced to him before anybody else. The lack of certainty and supernatural notebook was something he had to look into to confirm it existed. But for the mind-wiped Light, this concept was already pitted against him and was made confirmed and known to him in advance. He was in the position to hunt for it instead of learning of it himself. When Yagami first obtains the Shinigami notebook, we get a flashback of him thinking of using it, in which we get the first real insight to his true motives. His desire to kill his boredom. This is due to him actually doing things he regrets astronomically even as Kira after the fact, and even doing things he would normally never do, even after becoming an intoxicated super killer later. The first example of this is when he decides to test the notebook first. Of course, he is actively and possibly killing someone that doesn't really deserve it in either Light or even L's opinions later such as the Shinjuku killer who is considered extremely minor compared to the others Light would kill after. This is due to the fact, of course, Light didn't know fully if the notebook would even work, but it's still important to note he tried anyway on this possibly undeserving person. Shortly after this, we see him in class and we see some bullies picking on a fellow student of his, in which Light contemplates to himself if he should kill the bullies, but only rejects the notion due to the fact that he shouldn't kill people so close to him. That is a pretty insane and overlooked statement. Kill some school bullies? 
Kira would never kill someone that petty remotely later on, and in fact, laments the idea of other Kiras that kill on his name, killing people that are too minor or undeserving later, especially so early. So, why did he suggest killing kids for bullying? Because the Death Note is still new to him. The excitement of using it is above any moral compass he has. Later, we see him again in another situation where he is confronted with someone named Takuo Shibuimaru, a biker who is too aggressive when trying to pick up a girl. Light kills him by slamming a truck into him as he chases the girl before he actually technically commits a crime. This is something later explained in Death Note How to Read as being something Light actually regrets and has to come to terms with. In fact, he's so disgusted with himself, he almost vomits literally on the panel. So why did he do it? Because the Death Note's abilities and what they could do were more interesting. After doing this, he is more certain of what they could do and starts to value his moral compass more than the Death Note's random attributes and abilities. But in this situation, his boredom and desire for something more interesting overtook him and this is exactly why the first chapter of Death Note is called Boredom. It goes even further than this though. We still have to answer, why doesn't Light just sit in his room and kill people with the notebook if his interest now is changing the world and enforcing his moral compass? Because as I stated earlier, this is not what he wants. So let me prove it further. At the end of chapter 1 of Death Note, we see Light Yagami encounter the god of death that owns the Death Note he found, Ryuk. Ryuk explains his motives to Light and says he dropped it out of boredom. He just wanted to see how someone would use it for the fun of it. Light too then replies that he has been using it because he has been bored too. But not before he admits he has been so excited for people to find out about his existence and change the world to the point he has lost 10 pounds from not eating due to the anticipation of the moments. His eyes glow and his face lights up as he sees people recognizing him for something interesting. His position as a god. Ryuk, after hearing Light's goals, becomes elated and thinks the whole idea is very fun. Ryuk's reactions are very important and I'll get into those again soon. In the Death Note How to Read guide on page 76, Sugumi Oba, the author of Death Note, actually goes over why he named every chapter what he did. And this is what he says about chapter 1, Boredom. End quote. The reasons for why Ryuk dropped the notebook and for why Light wants to become a god arise from boredom. So there was no hesitation in choosing this title for the first chapter. Even though Light didn't exactly start using the notebook only out of boredom. End quote. Of course, there are more things than boredom for Light to start using the notebook. As I outlined earlier, such as his indoctrinated sense of justice that becomes warped via boredom. But you get the idea. Shortly after Light explains his fun idea to Ryuk, well, fun. The Super Detective L has begun his move against Kira with the help of the international police. The famous scene of him baiting Light into killing a prison inmate standing in for him that would only be airing on TV in the Kanto region of Japan to get his exact locations. L tells Light that he is not all beloved, that he is a murderer, and that he will catch and kill him. This new and mysterious powerhouse that rivals him in intelligence is the ultimate game. And in fact, Light comments how disappointing it was that their cat and mouse game could have been a lot more fun if L had been smarter before he killed L's stand-in, Lindell Taylor. But then we see Ryuk's reaction and he is completely elated and brimming with excitement, calling humans a riot. If you don't get it yet, Ryuk is somewhat of a projection of light interest, his boredom, his inner demons made literal. The reaction Ryuk shows is the reaction light has on the inside. To him, this is the game he wants to play. This is what he's been looking for. To say he lost when the game just started is somewhat of a nearsighted perspective on what's actually happening. Later, Light actually comments on the idea that he could just sit in his room with the Death Note and L would never find him, and could never get any proof of him. But instead, he says, but I want to kill L. That's right, he values capturing and killing L 
just as much, if not even more so, than changing the world and his moral compass. But he could just kill people slowly and surely, gain support from the shadows, and as L never would found any evidence, lose his favor with the public and eventually nothing happens. L would sort of lose by default. But Light actively doesn't want that. He specifically wants to find and execute the man named L, because it is interesting. To break it down, Light had a dilemma in which he had to choose between his divine mission and his pride and boredom, but we see Light choose to risk his goal of changing the world when he challenges L. This shows us Light's true character and bypasses the idea that saving the world was his priority or that he truly cared for it compared to the satisfaction of winning a game. We see this stated verbatim when Light, after shaking a bit of his rust off and getting ganged up on by L's successors, Nier and Mello, instead of anger or despair that he has to play these games all over again, he smiles. Finally, something interesting is happening again after the death of L. In fact, there's a situation where Light has the opportunity or a potential situation to kill all of the MPA agents he's working with and fake his own death to escape near and get away with everything. However, the reason he doesn't is for the mere fact that he would be running away, running away from the challenge, his competition, his pride. These aren't the only times these things are brought up either. We see that not only is he bored, but he's highly competitive. Ever wonder what the point of the tennis game was? It's not like it was needed to do anything. Maybe just break the ice a bit better, but even generic conversation could have done that. It was for L to confirm if Light really was childish and hated losing just like him. But what we learn in actuality is that Light hates losing and is possibly even more competitive than L ever was. To the point that even after learning that the tennis game's victor had no point between them, Light actively states he wants to beat L down at it. And after the game is over, he's panting and dripping with sweat, whereas L doesn't have a single drop on him. You could say he really doesn't like losing, right? From here, people don't understand why Light made it obvious that he was a student and let the police track his killings. This is because, once again, they don't understand the story too well. The reason Light makes him being a student and knowledge more obvious is to close the gap between him and L. The second the police suspect he's a student, he shows he can kill people whenever he wants with zero schedule attached, to the point that L realizes that Yagami is not only baiting him, but making fun of him too. Light plans to use the police and turn them on the super detective, and in fact, if L didn't straight up meet the police and Light in person, this would have actually worked. I outline these struggles more in my Light vs. L video, who was really smarter. Anyway, after all this with the police is done and Light makes his moves back, L comments that Light has closed the gaps between them, with the time for them to meet being at hand. After this, it's mainly Misa's slip-ups that cause Light to be put in bad situations, but that's a discussion I've already had in a few other videos that's not really relevant to this one. The other part of Light's character is his intense pride, which I somewhat foreshadowed already, which is also shown many times throughout the story, and also most notably during the tennis match. L also shares this trait and is willing to even take down innocent detectives in challenges of pride and destroy them to justify his positions and his place in the world, his sense of what he calls justice, which I once again go over in the L evil video. This pride between them is so great that Light won't ever run away or take the easy way out against anybody at Whammy's house, and the fated battle between he and L is actually titled The Battle of Pride. This pride causes the characters to do things that would be seemingly suboptimal in dealing with the situation. But this doesn't just apply to Light, but to L and even Nier as well. To go further into that, everyone in the SPK, which is Nier's task force for taking down Kira after L's death, basically agrees that Light is Kira. They trust Kira's judgment on this 100%. Light actually questions if Nier has L's pride in his monologues and thinks Nier may straight up try to kill him due to not having it. However, we later learn that Nier actually does have pride and would refuse to detain or kill Light even if he only does something moderately suspicious until he has a 100% and utter victory over him to win L's battle of pride. 
This pride is what makes a lot of the characters seemingly do things, like I said, that don't seem optimal, and is another reason Light doesn't just sit in his room and ignore L while writing in his notebook all day. A character having inner conflict between two motives such as this doesn't mean he is less intelligent, and only goes to show the writing quality of the story and how he's more like a real person. In story, style, structure, substance, and the principles of screenwriting, Robert McKee explains this as the true character, in which true character can only be expressed through choice and dilemma. How the person chooses to act under pressure is who he is. The greater the pressure, the truer and deeper the choice to character. So when someone is forced to deal with a life or death choice against the world's greatest minds and decides to make these choices, you can be sure it's probably more akin to his true self and his real motives, with his initial unconscious desires becoming more conscious as he gets older, which is why he comments on L's pride when analyzing someone like Nier, whereas when he was younger, he thought it was actually due to his moral compass completely. There's one more thing that I sort of want to refute before wrapping up this video. A little bit off topic, but I thought I might say it. And that's a video you've probably already seen already, in which people think that Light slipped up and gave information about the Kitamuras and Ray Pember trailing him to L that he shouldn't have known at the time, which basically just makes him admit he's guilty. The only problem with this, and maybe it's due to being somewhat subtle, is that Light and L talk in this hospital, he gives the information out, about the case for what is shown to be actually be ours. But the proof of this is a very one small establishing shot that shows it turns nighttime before Light talks about things he shouldn't have known before L told him, implying that L gave him some info while they talked for hours. Weird thing to debunk, but it just bothered me a bit, and a lot of people think that Light just randomly slipped up and told L that Ray Pember was tailing him. That aside, Light Yagami's motives are a bit interesting and in how they show how boredom, pride, and how we are raised and who we admire warp us as people. Have you ever met someone who likes to argue? Who likes to make people feel bad about a video game? Have you ever even met a troll? Maybe a really heinous troll that goes way too far and still laughs about it later. Maybe a swatter, a doxer, just someone really weird. What inspires people to do these heinous and mean things? What inspires people even to do things such as kill others? What inspires people to do bad things that don't even directly benefit them in any physical form? Maybe it can be illness, anger, desperation, idealism, or maybe sometimes all it takes is being a little tired of the mundane, a bit of boredom, and getting just a little too obsessed with yourself, your ideas, and not caring much for others. Maybe you expect too much from people and it warps us on how we think compared to how people actually are. Maybe then it's possible that something as simple as boredom can inspire us to be evil.